to do is say, I believe in Jesus Christ. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. I'll confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead and I am saved right then. But think about this. Let's get to this next slide quickly because 17 is not the verse that we memorize or talk about. Because 17 says, God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Check this out. This is where we in the household of faith get this jacked up. We become experts in judgment of the world and its practices rather than just saying, wait a second, I know you out there and you in the world and you're doing all this stuff because I used to do the same stuff that you're doing. But we don't talk about that. We won't share with people our past and the negative stuff. Real talk. You will share the great things that happened in your past, but you won't share the dirt of your past. And it's the funny thing about the dirt of your past. The people who, thank you, Father, for this. The people who know the dirt of your past always going to know the dirt of your past. But if you could tell your story the way that Jesus would tell your story about the dirt of your past, he would say, listen, there's something that I knew about that dirt that I was going to clean up. And now they can speak to you from a clean position. But we don't necessarily want to go back and talk about the dirt because we allow them to control the dirt. Love God for this. And everybody got a little bit of dirt on you. Everybody got a little bit of dirt on you. It's some folk that ain't in the house that if they ran into that friend that you used to hang with. Or them places. And this is the cool thing about them places. Some of them, when they got torn down, you was ecstatic. You was jumping for joy because they ain't going to know all the stuff. Whew, I used to do in that place. Thank you, Lord, for tearing that place down. And then you happen to be in the store and you there just out. You just came out of church praising God. And the person that you used to be, your running buddy in the spot. Come around all your Christian friends. Hey, remember when we used to, and they call you by that name that don't nobody call you no more. Except the people in the spot knew you by that name. And they done called you and you like, I don't even know who they talking to. And they, shh, that ain't me no more, right? But he said what? He said, listen, I came to actually save the world. But I didn't come to judge the world. This should never be an aspect. And for us inside the household of faith, there are things that we need to be able to handle in the house. When it come in and it's not of God, we need to speak to that. But there are times where we wind up judging the world for what the world does. And God said, I didn't send my son for that. Stay in your spot. Stay in your lane. Don't judge them. Just tell them about my son who's going to save them. But many times we judge them and then what we do is we do the exact opposite of what God wants to have happen. Because he said, the one that you judge, I'm going to judge you by the same standard that you judge them by. Right? And our standard, ooh, stay here and then I'll run to this next part. Our standard is a lot harsher than God's. We will not give people second chances. Who you mean to tell me a second chance? You messed it up the first time. And if you was real with yourself, you ever sat in a room and just had a conversation with yourself and was just like, how many times have I messed up stuff the first time? And God said, well, wait a second. How long you got? We're going to talk for a while about the things you messed up just in our relationship. But I won't do that to you. Why? Because I love you that much. I don't want you to be a prisoner of your past. I actually want you to be somebody who can talk about how your past has been changed. So let's get here. I want to get here quickly. So in Romans 5, 8, this is cool. It says, but God showed us his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were what? Still sinners, yet sinners, right? That he would send his son into the world and he would say, they out there sinning, but I'm still going to die for them. Now, this is the thing. I want you to stay in this space. Then he said, listen, his love is so great that he sent Christ while we were still out there doing all the stuff we knew was counter to him. And real talk, and this is something. And once you come into the house of the faith, there's an aspect of understanding. But there's times where we dip in and out of the house based upon what our flesh desires. And then there's times where we think to ourselves, and I was in the scripture verse, and I said, God, but help me with this. How am I supposed to deal with this 
Christ died for me while I was still sinning. But if I stay in the house long enough or I want to give myself an amnesia of my past, then I'll look and I'll say to myself, well, when I was sinning, I was only doing these little things. Uh, stay here. Some of us, if we're real with ourselves and you did an autopsy on your past, there would be not enough words to describe the number of times that you sinned against God. There just wouldn't be enough. And so I ran to a space because I don't want to talk about nobody else and I only want to deal with my own. So I want to get to this next slide quickly. And I'm going to read these words. Lust, pornography, alcoholism, drunkenness, fornication, spirit of fear, gluttony, robbing God, idolatry, pride, worry, envy, lying, fighting, excessive anger, cursing, laziness, unforgiveness, dot 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 that's me see i can't talk about nobody else but i can say those are the things that god saved me from now when i was compiling that list the interesting thing about that list was i was looking at the list and i said how many slides could i really put together and god said you only got so long because you got to be out of the y before 12 o'clock <laughs> And I'm going to give you real talk about how many sins there actually are that I wound up not putting on. I had to stay to a place and then I had to put the dot, 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 dot. And this is the other thing. Sometimes we cool with being able to say the sins that don't shock people. You cool with the, well, I was a liar one day. Well, you, you know, I, I sometimes thought improper thoughts. And God said, just be free if you're really free of it. You ain't got no issue with people seeing your past if it's really past. You ain't got no problem saying this ain't an issue for me no more because I don't do that. And there ain't nobody that can then come and bear witness counter to these things. So as I'm developing this list, I'm saying to myself, I said, God, now I just want to help folk. You're not the only one. If you sat long enough and you looked at your own list, you could go to the word of God. And God said that I put some of the past sins of some of the people who did the greatest things for me in the word of God. Moses don't get called as some perfect person. He actually murdered a man, buried him. Didn't want nobody to find out. Then they said, hey, listen, you're going to murder us like you did the other guy? He runs from that situation. So what did God do with Moses? He said, listen, I know you stutter. Watch this. I know you an ex-convict who should have been convicted for murder, but I'm going to still use you. Right? Well, check this out. Stay in the space. Listen, I, I'm, I'm going to use this guy named Saul. He was present when Stephen was stoned. He used to kill Christians. He used to go out and take them out. He would hunt them down. Right? But what I'm going to do with him is he's going to have this encounter with Jesus, and I'm going to save him from himself. Then I'm going to change his name, and y'all going to talk about him as Paul, but I remember when, when he was Saul. And as a result, he's going to write a whole bunch of the books of the New Testament. And I'm going to use him in such a way that all y'all going to give witness and testimony. And he's going to speak in a way that nobody's going to be able to come against the words that he says and the power that I've given him. Now, he's going to suffer for me. But I don't want you, I don't want you to forget this is some things that he did that were sinful. But I saved him from those things. Abraham lied about his relationship with his wife. Isaac did the same thing. Jacob was a trickster. We don't, we don't talk about this stuff. And what really you've been actually saved from. You know why? Because once you've been saved from it, sometimes what the enemy want to do is he want to take you right back. So I, I, you ain't really been saved from that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Or watch this. Or you have the shame of your past without the freedom that God has given you. Check it out. You still wear the handcuffs of shame, and God said, I have freed you from those things. Shackles, when they broken, don't go back on. Prisoners don't go back to the cell willingly. Ask anybody who's been in an incarcerated situation. They don't even want to drive by. They'll take a whole nother street. Uh-uh, you going downtown? They, they got a jail downtown. Uh-uh, I think I'm going to hang out on the outskirts. I don't even want to go back to that place, right? 
When you've been free from something, then you could talk about it willingly. Now, I'm going to give you another instance of something before we run to this next scripture verse. Every sin you've been free from gives you an opportunity to give a testimony to somebody else. What happens, though, is that the enemy wants to stop the power of your testimony. So he says, listen, I'll steal the power of your testimony by allowing you or wanting you to live a life of shame based upon something that you've actually been freed from. So I'm going to ask the question, why would you not give a witness and testimony about something you've been delivered from that's going to save somebody else because Christ saved you? There's some folk, real talk, that'll look at this list and they'll go, hey, pastor, I could talk to you about some of the stuff on this list. Why? Because I put it on the list. And there's some stuff that ain't on the list that you can start talking to me. And then I'm going to say, whoa, wait a second. Me and you got something in common. I've been there. I know what that's like. I know when you have a situation and you just want to go off and you done bit through your tongue. you like, oh, my goodness, God, I just oh, I want to tell them. I want to just read them, give it all to them, God. And then I'm going to just tell him I'm sorry later. I have already hooked it up. I'm going to just give it to him. Then I'm going to tell him I'm sorry. That's like telling somebody I'm going to cut you. And then I'm going to try to heal the wound with a little sorry. Right? I'm going to wound you. Right? I want to break you. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a band-aid and say I was sorry for what I said. Right? So let's get here. I just want to share this other piece because it becomes huge. We look at this next part in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 20. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Say new person. Then it says, the old life is gone. A new life has begun. Stay here with me for just a second. Salvation is new life. You know what happens, though, is sometimes because we don't fully understand or receive the calling to salvation to save other people, what winds up happening is, is we don't live the new life. We still got vestiges of the old life. Stay here. There's some clothes you used to wear you just can't fit no more. I don't care how much you work out. I don't care how much you desire it. It just don't fit. And then what happens when it don't fit? You don't wear it. Right? You don't go out, you know, I'm going to put on this extra medium shirt. I'm in an extra large to a double XL lifestyle now, but I'm going to put on this medium, small medium shirt. And then I'm going to front like what you see is muscles. It's my flesh crying out that this is too small. Right? And so the small, medium shirts I used to have, I don't wear those no more. I can't fit those anymore. Those are a part of my past. Now watch this. I could work out and do a whole lot of lifting and all the rest of it, and muscle mass builds up. And then what happens is I got to buy a new wardrobe. Stay here. See, when you're in Christ Jesus, you get a new wardrobe. But some of us trying to squeeze ourselves into our old gear. That's the old life. And as a result, once I clean the closet out, I don't have the things that are too small. Stay here. You got some shoes that you used to wear that you just can't fit. Corns. It's not cool. Stay here with me for just a second. I got to say this. Your pinky toe is important. It just is. It ain't meant to be in bondage like that for long periods of time. Just because you want to be cute for five minutes. And this is my thing. Stay with me. You don't want them to be cute, but you got to take them off because they hurt. And they ain't meant to be worn no more. You past. Some things you got to let go. If it's causing pain, it ain't supposed to be in your present. All your pinky toes is thanking God for that message. Right? So listen, so the whole life is gone. Now watch this, stay here with me as God's going to bless. Some people want to lock you into your past because that's where they are. They're still in your past. They don't know the new you. This is the thing. Don't try to defend or argue the new you to them. If they don't want to get to know the new you, cool. Let it go. Because if all they want to do is remind you of the old life and then, watch this, stay here because it's the trick of the enemy. They remind you of the old life, then you get upset. 
That ain't who I am. You're just going to argue your way to it. You're just going to get angry. Don't you tell me what I used to do. And they know. They got the dirt on you. He might as well say, I remember when we used to hang out. That's cool. Can I ask you a question? Why do you always talk about the old me? What is the purpose in that? What's the intent? Could you help me understand where are you really trying to drive me to? Where you think you all that? No, I don't. If anything, I think there's something that's happening, and I think you want a little bit of what I got. Now, let me tell you, I don't have anything. What I do got is Jesus. That's who changed me. That's who saved me. That's who rescued me. That's who pulled me out the pit. That's who, who washed me up and made me clean. That's who changed my speech. That's who changed what I see. That's who changed what I hear. The reason I don't go where you at is because I don't think I'm better than you. I know that I can't handle them environments without Jesus. And if he ain't sent me there, I ain't going there. So as a result, I think I'm going to just stay outside that spot. Well, you think you better know, I know I'm not. But Jesus has blessed me to be better in him. Stay here. So let's get here. So 17, you're a brand new person. But in 18, there's something that happens. And I want us to read this. It says, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. Check this out. The calling to salvation is actually a call that everyone should be making. Yet every day you got an opportunity to call somebody else because you've been called. There are times where I go into stores and I'll share this little story. I have these things that happen. And I was in the store buying some chips after the fast. The chips were not my fast, but I just wanted some chips. And so I said to myself, I'm going to go get these hot chips. And my daughter wanted some chips. So I said, I'm going to go get these chips. And there was a woman who was there and she was at the register. And the Lord said, go ask her if she needs prayer. And me and God had these conversations. And I said, God, I really don't want to go up and ask her, do she need prayer? And sometimes you need to be honest with God because he already know what you're thinking. So I said, God, I'm really not trying to go ask her. I said, God, why don't I just pray for her back here? I don't have to go say anything to her. I could, Lord, you said she needs prayer. I could just pray for her right here. Lord, bless the woman who's at the register and I could walk out. That's what I was trying to do. So I bought the bag of chips and I'm walking out and I said, he said, no, that ain't what I told you to do. Go ask her. Does she need prayer? So I said, oh, God, I go, I didn't even need gas. But I go park my car next to the gas, the, uh, the, where you can put the gas in. And so I'm getting gas and then I'm looking and I said, God, well, I got to go back in because I can't be disobedient to you because I don't want to miss a blessing that you have for her. And as a result, God, I'm going to go back in. So I run into the restroom to wash my hands. I'm just trying to stall. The whole thing, I'm just trying to stall. So I'm in the bathroom and this is the coolest thing. I said, God, really, if you really want me to do it. Let there be nobody there when I come back out of the restroom. Let the whole gas station area be just vacant with nobody. I said, he ain't going to do that because I just saw six cars. I walk out. There's nobody in there. <laughs> I said, all right, God, that's cool. So I run up. I said, listen, I'm a pastor of a church. Is there anything that I could pray for you for? She said, no, there's not. I said, okay, thank you. And I walked out. Now the issue for that, and I stayed and I stay here. The issue for that was, it wasn't about whether she said anything to me. The issue was, was did I give her the opportunity in God to say something to him? See, he'll use you in a way that don't fit your situation. And he'll test you in a way to see if you really are who you say you are. And then you'll mess around and ask something. Say, listen, if you really want me to do it, God, make nobody be present. Now watch the person as they walk down. There ain't nobody there. And I look and I said, wait a second. So if he gave me a gift and it's, he brought me back to him through Christ and he's given me a task to reconcile people back to him, then people got to know, watch this, love this about God. People got to know who team you on. Some of y'all see the shirt. Walking around in Walmart with my son. Coolest thing. We just walking around and I have the opportunity and many times I wind up buying stuff I don't need. If you leave me in Walmart long enough, I go to get milk and I got a, I got a cart full of stuff. Right? Milk you could carry in one hand. 
I'm like, what? So my wife, she won't send me grocery shopping because she already know. I'm going to buy all kind of unnecessary stuff, right? So me and my son were walking through Walmart, and we happened to find ourselves in the clothes section. And I'm in the clothes section, and I said, man, you know what? I'm going to just look at these T-shirts. And I'm looking at these T-shirts, and I see this one, and it says Team Jesus. And this is in Walmart. And I'm saying to myself, so Walmart got a Team Jesus t-shirt. If I'm on his team, I'm going to buy his jersey. I don't need the Pistons. I don't need all the all-star stuff. I need the star. Right? So I get the Team Jesus shirt, and I'm like, I'm saying, Prince, they got a Team Jesus. He like, Dad, you are too excited. I don't know a no grown man that this is this happy about a Team Jesus shirt. You make it seem like you just won a championship. I'm like, dude, but I'm on the champions team. Yeah. What? So let's run here. Let's look at this next slide quickly so I can, I can finish this up. So it says, for God was in, go back to 19, for God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now check this out. This is the coolest thing. It says he no longer was counting people's sins against them. Stay here. And this is, and he gave us this wonderful message of what? Reconciliation. That's the calling of salvation. Right? If I've been saved, then that means you could be saved. And if you could be saved, then somebody else could be saved. And if they could be saved, then somebody else could be saved. Now, check this out. If I got the message and you got the message, right? Then how come we can't get a message to all these people who are out here that don't know about Christ? But you got to get a message in the way that Christ would give it. Stay here. You can't browbeat people or manipulate them into relationship with Jesus. Don't try to scare them into it. Give them the reality. Listen, if you pass and you don't know Christ for yourself, then you're not going to be in right relationship with him and you're not going to live eternity with him. Share that. Don't run from the truth. But don't browbeat folk into a place where they start to feel guilty. It got to be a relationship that's loving, a relationship that's caring, a relationship that has mercy and grace and is filled with all the fruit of the Spirit. If you can give that, then people want to join Jesus' team. Stay here. Sometimes folk don't want to get on his team, not because of Jesus, but because some of the players are selfish. They don't want to cooperate with the coach. The coach tell them, listen, hey, you got to love your enemy. I ain't following that play, Jesus. Uh uh. I ain't doing that one. Because they hurt me, Jesus. Jesus says, wait a second, man, I done just took some nails for you. They pierced my side. I took that for you. And you want to talk to me about hurt? I'm not saying that your hurt ain't important, but it shouldn't keep you out of right relationship with Christ. And we as team members, we should support our teammates. Stay here. If we were really to look and said, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation, then when a teammate is down, you should help them up. I'm going to share something with y'all quickly, and I'll get to this last one. There's, there's this little team of girls called the Grapes. They're the coolest kids. They're third and fourth grade girls, and I just love these little girls. They are, like, awesome. Audrey and Olivia and Lauren and Joy and Michaela and Adriana, and I'm blessed to be their coach. And, I'm, and the coolest thing about them, when they came, the only one I knew was Joy and Audrey, because Joy's my daughter, and Audrey was a little girl who played on one of her softball teams. And so they come to practices. This is the coolest thing. They come to practices every week. Stay here. Love this. They come to practices every week, and they give me all that they got for one hour. And it's the coolest thing. They walk into the gym. Coach, what are we doing today? And I do the same thing all the time. We're doing warm-ups. We got so many things we got to do. And it's the coolest thing. And I have each one of them lead the warm-up. So one will lead jumping jacks. And another one will lead stretching. And another one will lead push-ups. And another one will lead whatever we're doing. And then they go and they run up and down the court. Because they got to be physically fit. Right? And then after that, this is the coolest thing. After that, I tell them, and these are the plays we're going to run. And then on Saturdays, they go into a game against the opposing team. Stay with me. 
They go into the game against the opposing team. And as I am standing on the sideline with these six little girls and we unite as a team before we go to fight or to go against the opposing team, I tell them I need you guys to always operate as a team and to run the plays that we've worked on. And so these little girls, when I call out one or I call out two or I call out three or I call out four or I call out five or 53 or 42 or 24 or 35, whatever it is, or, or press breaker or stack or line, they run the play. And I said, God, help me with this. So you mean to tell me that really the Bible is the playbook for all of God's, all your teammates? And you mean to tell me that when you tell us to run a play, if we actually know the play, then the team can run the play. And when the enemy comes against us, that we can actually do the things that your playbook tells us? He said, boy, I have you coach because it'll make you a better under shepherd. Because if you know the playbook and you get just a couple folk, don't need a boatload of folk. Don't need everybody. It's only six on our team. Stay here, and then I'm going to run through this last scripture verse. It's only six on our team, and only five can play at one time. So they only got one. That's a sub. What they know about each other is I need you to be present for the game because I won't get the rest I need if you ain't there. And some of them real talk, and I'm real with them. Stay here because some of y'all is in this space. And some of them I tell you, and you're not coming out of the game. They look at me, they go, really? I ain't going to get a break? You mean to tell me I don't have a sub? I said, no, you that important to the team. I'll call timeouts when you need it. Watch this, that's Sabbath. Stay there. If you need a rest, I'll make sure you get it. And watch this. And as your coach, you don't have to talk to the referee. I'm going to do that. And when the other team look like they are, who will stay here? I got to share this with y'all because it was cool. My team got frazzled Saturday. We were playing against a team that was really good. And the girls got like all kind of excited. And we're sitting on the bench and I called a timeout. And I said, hey, girls, this is what I need you to do. Do what I do. I said, take a deep breath. I said, take another one. And you know what they did? They did exactly what I said. And then they said, I said, how do you feel? They were like, relaxed. How many times has God said, take a deep breath? How many times has God said, listen, my son got you? Watch this. Check this out. This school is thinking it run to the last slide. My son told you what your situation's outcome already is. It's the coolest thing. It's two words. It's finished. Stay there. See, when you saved, you understand that it's finished is for all the situations that you're going through that's counter to what God wants for your life. Depression, check this out. You depressed? Get to the Bible. Get in relationship with Jesus. And then say, it's finished. Your lack of prosperity in your pockets, it's finished. The lack of you not having hope or faith in Jesus, it's finished. All this stuff that Jesus did on the cross for us to save us, he says those things that are counter, it is finished. Let me get to the end. So in this last one, it says, so we are Christ's ambassadors. Say ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead. Watch this, stay here. Come back to God. Do you realize that that's one of the greatest lines you can say to anybody? I know you've been gone a while. You ain't been in the house. It's cool. I ain't even, listen, you ain't even got to tell me why you've been gone. I don't even need to know. Check this out. If you ever come to GCDC and you've been gone for a little while and somebody asks you, well, where, why ain't you been here? Holler at me. Don't go off. Just come talk to me as the under shepherd because I, I need them to understand. That's not a play that we run here at GCDC. That's somebody else's playbook. The teammates here, we ain't concerned about why you've been gone. We want to help you stay connected. But at the end of the day, it ain't our job to judge why you've been gone. We just want you to get back in the house. Think about it, coach. You just love when your players show up. Just ecstatic. You're like, ooh, the team is here. We about to get it, right? Because this is the thing. Stay here. Because the coach can't play the game for you. 
Jesus is where? At the right hand of the Father making intercession for the saints. He says, listen, I've given them a job. The calling to salvation is for them to actually call other people. There's some teammates that's still out there. There's some folk that know that you saved and they need to hear your testimony. They need to know that when you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. And that you didn't forget the stuff you used to do. You just don't do it no more. There's a person that suffers from alcoholism that needs to know that you used to drink too much. There's a person that suffers from addiction that needs to know that you once were addicted. There's a person who's in a domestic violence situation right now that needs to know that God blessed you to survive that situation, that you have no odds against the person who did it, and that you have forgiven that individual and you got a brand new life in him. Somebody need to hear your testimony. Because watch this, ambassadors talk about who they actually represent. And when you're an ambassador of the king of kings and the lord of lords, you talk about the kingdom and not about the worldly stuff. You'll get to a space where you'll say, I don't care how long you've been gone. All I want and all God wants is for you to come back to be with him. All he wants is you to come back to be in right relationship. And he gave his son and he already knew. That you was going to be the prodigal that was out there. He already knew that you was going to be in a pit with some pigs and all the rest of that. He already knew that there was a situation you was going to be going through that you couldn't get yourself out of. And all he wanted me to do was to tell you that he wants you to come back. We ain't concerned about what kept you out there. We want you to get back in here so we can help you face the thing that had you out there. And as a result, we as your teammates, we as the ones who love you, we as the ones who are representative of the Most High God, want you to know that he loves you beyond measure and there's nothing that can separate the love that he has for you. And as a result, because he's given me that love, I want to give it to you. And check this out. And I got a group of people that I hang out with who know him in that way. And all they want to do is just love you back into right relationship with him. And check this out. The shame of that situation that was on the outside ain't going to stop us from loving you on the inside. When you've been saved and you are free, you talk different. Your witness is different. You ain't concerned about what they knew this about me. And so everybody got a past. It's just that everybody don't have to be a prisoner of it. And when you're in Christ Jesus, you are free to live the life that he has saved you to live. Stand to your feet.